Uh, thank you, and welcome everyone to this month's Connect with Remedy monthly webinar. Uh, today we have BMC discovery and CMDB synchronization performance tuning is our topic today. Uh, this will discuss the integration between these two BMC products. And to take us through this information, we have Nicholas Bombarski and Manish Patel. I'll turn it over to Nicholas and Manish at this point. Hello, everybody. I'm Nicholas. I have been with BMC Software for 15 years, first in France for a few years, then here in Northern California, where for the past eight years I have been working as a customer-facing engineer for BMC Discovery. I often assist our customer support organization, as well as our professional services folks on customer matters, including those regarding the integration between Discovery and the CMDB. Hi, I'm Panish Patel. I have been working with the BNC from last 10 years, and uh, during my experience, I worked more on CMDB as well as its uh, integration components. I had an opportunity working with many customers on, uh, you know, CMDB as well as integration performance tuning. And today in this webinar, we'll share uh, some of the experiences. Exactly. Manish and I regularly consult each other when this topic comes up, and we have worked together on this webinar to share some technical knowledge. Now, the audience for this webinar likely includes Discovery and CMDB specialists. So we thought it would be useful to first spend a few minutes introducing both products as it is likely many of you have seen one, but not the other. I will briefly go over BMC Discovery, Manish will cover CMDB, and then we will dive into the technical details of the CMDB synchronization and its configuration. Once you are more familiar with the various concepts of this integration, we will concentrate on performance and what can be done to define and meet your requirements. We will finish with some explanation of what can be found in the various log files related to synchronization, both on the discovery appliance as well as on the AR CMDB server. A BMC discovery, which used to be called Atrium Discovery and Dependency Mapping, or ADDM, creates a dynamic view of all data center assets and relationships between them, giving IT visibility into how the assets support the business. It identifies system in your network and then uses different tools and techniques to retrieve information from them as quickly as possible and with the lowest impact on your infrastructure. Each scan digs into the information and dependencies for all software, hardware, network, storage, and versions, providing IT with the context needed to create an application map from any piece of information about it. Discovery is a ready-to-run virtual appliance. Deployment takes minutes. There is no installation process to run through, no external database to install and configure, and no specific configuration and operating system requirements to satisfy. This allows you to get up and running very quickly with minimal effort to maintain it. While in operation, organizations can scan multiple times per day depending on their need to maintain accuracy. Discovery offers nearly limitless scale through adequate architecture options in terms of scan speed, size of the data stored, and speed to access information. It is supplied as a Linux-based virtual machine or as a Kickstart DVD which can be installed on your own hardware. It includes a data store based on Berkeley DB, which uses a graph model and is more suited to modeling the complex relationships in an IT environment than a relational database. When an environment is divided by firewalls so that a single appliance is unable to reach all parts of the network, multiple scanning appliances can be deployed, one on each section of the network blocked by a firewall. The data is then consolidated into a central consolidator appliance. The consolidator then provides a coherent view of the entire scanned network. Clustering of multiple BMC discovery machines is possible for those organizations with very large RT, IT infrastructure where the performance required is greater than that of a single BMC discovery machine. Both scanning and consultation appliances can be clustered as needed. BMC discovery clusters can also be configured to be fault tolerant so they can keep working when a cluster member fails.
To discover data in your IT environment, DMC Discovery requires access to host systems and other network and management devices. It stores credentials and other login details, including IDs and passwords, in a secure credential vault. You can set up different login credentials to use on different computers by individual IP address or a range of addresses. You can set up several access methods and define the order in which they are to be attempted. For example, here on this slide, I have defined two different credentials for SSH and Telnet access to all IPs. Job public would be attempted first, and if it failed to connect to a target server, root would be attempted next. Each access method is attempted until a working credential is found or the list is exhausted. When DMC Discovery successfully logs into a host, the access method used for the login is recorded. Then, on subsequent scans, the access method used during the previously successful login to the host is first attempted. Scanning of the data center can be manually executed or scheduled during specific scan windows. In this example, I will have my test lab servers, whose IP addresses I listed in a range box, scanned every weekday at 10 a.m. One could also choose a snapshot scan, that is a scan that will start immediately and run only once. One could also list IP ranges rather than individual IP addresses or a combination of both. After scanning is complete, it results in discovery runs, such as those in this tab of runs that completed recently. These runs represent the scan of the endpoints found behind the IP addresses or ranges that were targeted. What we have seen on the last couple of slides is illustrated in this picture. The discovery process uses credentials from the vault to log into target systems run commands and retrieve directly discovered data, which it stores in its local data store. This directly discovered data is used internally by Discovery's reasoning engine to create or update inferred data. Hosts, network devices, software instances are typical examples of inferred data. Seen here in the visualization, that is the information likely of most interest to most users. Accurate and complete asset data. Through regularly scheduled discovery runs, it is kept updated and current. Discovery then offers seamless integration into Remedy CMDB with out-of-the-box continuous data synchronization. The inferred data is what is used as a source for the CMDB synchronization to populate the discovery data set in the CMDB. Typically, in environments where several scanning appliances feed a consolidation appliance, the CMDB synchronization will be configured on the consolidation appliance as it holds a coherent view of the entire scan network. But before we drill down into the synchronization itself, Manish will give us a quick overview of the BMC Atrium CMDB. Thanks, Nicholas. So when it comes to a CMDB, I think a lot of people uh, in our audience uh, might know about CMDB coming with the AR system background. Uh, others I'll kind of gl a glance through what the CMDB is and the major components of it. Um, CMDB is a single source of uh, configuration items. When we are looking at the configuration items, it's in your ID, IT environment uh, where any item which is configurable. Uh, for example, computer system, IP address, product, uh, and etc. Right? A lot of other uh, similar configuration items, you would see that. Um, CMDB actually comprises uh, with the common data model, which actually structures how your data should be stored within CMDB. It has a couple of other uh, the process components as well to uh, to cleanse and kind of merge data in a, the production data set, which is consumable by uh, you know different application consumers. Uh, when it comes to uh, normalization, normalization is the one which is uh, cleaning your data or improving the data quality. Uh, reconciliation engine will kind of help uh, merging all your data 
as a single source uh, when it comes to a different discovery sources. So here if you look at it, this is more about CMDB. Um, who will put the data in CMDB? It's a, uh, a BMC discovery tool or any other, uh, uh, the other discovery tool uh, which has integration with the CMDB either through Java API web services or using Atrium integrator. They can load data uh, into CMDB and make a use of it. So when it comes to uh, today, I mean, to be aligned with uh, today's webinar, uh, when it comes to like a performance tuning, um, CMDB is actually layer on top of AR server, and AR is again a whole uh, server application layer on top of uh, storing data into database. So when we are talking about a performance tuning, uh, we also need to consider AR server tuning as well as database tuning. So that's more about CMDB, uh, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the tuning and eight, uh, uh, in later. But before that, I'll hand it over to uh, Nicholas to cover the synchronization part of it. Thank you, Manish. So now let's concentrate on how our info data makes it from the BMC Discovery Data Store into the Atrium CMDB. That is done through the process we call CMDB synchronization, or more commonly, CMDB sync. It provides a configurable mechanism to keep data in the BMC Atrium CMDB synchronized with the information discovered and inferred by BMC Discovery. In order to configure it, you will find the CMDB Sync icon tab in the administration section of BMC Discovery. It presents you with a list of CMDB connections that have been created and their current status. If needed, multiple CMDB connections can be set up individually, allowing specific configurations for each. You can also enable, disable, pause, or resume synchronization on individual connections or globally. But here, I have created only one connection. Let's take a look. When I click on it, I am presented with a few tabs. The first tab, the Details tab shows the general details of my connection. Some are mandatory fields, such as the network address of my CMDB, what credentials to use, what data set to populate, and whether or not to sync impact attributes. If checked, the continuous sync box means that whenever BMC Discovery finishes scanning a device, it is immediately added to the synchronization queue. Similarly, whenever a device node is removed due to aging, it is also queued for synchronization, meaning that the deletion is propagated to the CMDB. In this way, the CMDB stays completely synchronized with BMC Discovery. But what we are most interested in are the details that are highlighted with those green arrows, as they can have a great impact on performance. Depending on what other components are running on the BMC Remedy AR server to which BMC Discovery is syncing, there may be a performance benefit to those applications and to the sync process from setting up a private queue configuration. Manish will expand on this a little bit later. But a private RPC queue number can now be specified in our connection details. Otherwise, the default SIMDB API RPC queue is used. You can now configure the batch size used for batch operations. The default is 100 and is usually adequate. But in some contexts, such as when syncing into a less performance CMDB system, some timeouts could occur when processing batched operations, and those may be worked around by setting the batch size to a lower value. Finally, concurrent workers enables you to specify the number of workers used by the CMDB sync process. This is a way to multi-thread the CMDB sync operation. For example, in my case here, two worker threads may sync two different device nodes concurrently. If the CMDB can take it, it makes the overall sync faster. The default is 1 and can be increased up to 20, but it's better to gradually increase it and test until you achieve your desired goal, for example, the ability to sync within a restricted time window. The next tab concerns filtering. Nodes which are created, deleted, or updated are added to the CMDB sync queue. But not all of the info data is required in the CMDB. It is filtered to reduce the amount of data synced, 
and to increase the relevance of that data for the CMDB users. Filtering is a two-stage process. Firstly, the BMC discovery root nodes, such, such as hosts, printer, network devices, are selected and a filter can be applied. Here, for example, I chose to define a filter to fully prevent the synchronization of printers. But this is highly configurable. I could just as well have defined a filter to allow, allow synchronization of Unix hosts if that's all I was interested in for my CMDB. After the discovery data is transformed into the CMDB common data model, an additional CMDB CI filter can be used to select those CIs to be synced to the CMDB. For example, here, I'm not interested in CIs of type BMC product, so those will be filtered. Most CMDB users, especially at the high end of the scale spectrum, are extremely conservative about the data that is put into the CMDB. Best practice for CMDB is to carefully analyze the needs of the plant data consumers and import only the bare minimum data to address those needs. BMC discovery synchronization filters ensure that only the data that you want is synchronized to CMDB. You should not start to use CMDB sync by synchronizing all your data from BMC discovery into the CMDB and then later reduce the synchronized data by subsequently applying filters. That would impose unnecessarily heavy load on the CMDB when the data that has already been synced is then deleted. The next step is about sync blackout windows. CMDB synchronization can usually occur at any time. To prevent CMDB access for a connection during sensitive times, such as during other scheduled activities like normalization or reconciliation, you can configure blackout windows to occur. During a blackout window, all processing of the CMDB synchronization queue for that connection is paused. New nodes can still be scheduled for synchronization, both by continuous synchronization and batch synchronization, but no processing occurs until the blackout window ends. In this example, as I know that my AR server may be down for maintenance in the weekend, I define a blackout window to prevent synchronization on Saturdays and Sundays. Obviously, in some cases, this could have an impact on sync performance requirements, as you have to ensure you can sync what you need to sync regularly within your approved sync windows. Let's say, for example, that you have a 23-hour blackout window every day until 11 p.m. Then you may have to use multiple workers to sync concurrently so that all the data you discover during the day can be synced within that last one hour. Let's move on to the next tab. Resynchronization is an intensive operation that assesses the content of the CMDB dataset against the authoritative version stored in BMC Discovery Data Store. And then it updates the CMDB dataset to match the content of, the, of this BMC Discovery shadow copy. Occasionally, the model stored in the CMDB dataset becomes out of step with the shadow copy for a CMDB connection and requires resynchronization. For example, if CMDB tools have been used to modify the dataset. In this case, when updates are written to non-existent nodes, instance errors are raised. When BMC Discovery registers these instance errors, a resynchronization is recommended. Therefore, to avoid this, it is recommended to leave the CMDB dataset untouched, with its data updated only by the sync process. Note that sometimes a resync is mandatory and the CMDB sync is disabled until the resynchronization is complete. This could happen, for example, after upgrade from version 10.1 or when creating a new CMDB sync connection to a previously used CMDB dataset. But if you create a new connection to an empty CMDB dataset, there is no need to perform a resync. You can go ahead and perform continuous sync immediately. Note that there, there were many important resync enhancements, including with BMC Discovery 11.1, to alleviate some past pain points. One of them is the ability, if a CMDB resynchronization is interrupted for any reason, to resume processing where it left off. Also, the new incremental resync 
instead of waiting for a complete resynchronization to commit, you can get back to normal synchronization activity immediately by performing resynchronization incrementally in the background. Finally, the last tab shows a detailed status of the CMDB sync connection. From a performance standpoint, there are some important things to look at here. The connection test response time is refreshed regularly. A higher response time, such as several seconds, may indicate some issue with the network latency or a busy CMDB system. The number of devices in queue, if high, may indicate that the continuous sync is not able to keep up with discovery and or that the sync blackout windows are too restrictive. Hence, devices are added to the queue faster than they are cleared, which is not an ideal situation, and we will need to remedy to that. Finally, watch for errors. If there are some, they will be reported in the most recent error messages section. A common symptom of poor sync performance is the presence of numerous timeouts timeout errors such as error code 91. They indicate that the API calls made by discovery to the CMDB failed to complete within a reasonable time. If everything else is set up correctly, such timeouts usually mean that some tuning is required on the CMDB side of things, which is something that Manish will cover in a bit. The CMDB sync process performance may be impacted by underlying discovery appliance performance issues. In order to transform the discovery data into the CMDB data and maintain its local shadow copy, it performs a lot of model read and write operations and, for example, could be affected ne negatively by swapping due to insufficient physical memory. This shouldn't be a problem for appliances with adequate specifications. But in some cases where specifications are just enough, it may be necessary to either increase them or schedule CMDB sync to run only during windows when the appliance would otherwise be idle. Likewise, due to the nature of the integration and the amount of data circulating between the discovery appliance and the CMDB, a poor network throughput or latency between the two systems could represent a performance bottleneck for the synchronization process. I stated before that you could create several different CMDB connections on the same DMC discovery appliance. While this may be useful for various reasons, it also means that the continuous synchronization to multiple CMDBs or data sets will generate more demanding system activity, such as reads and writes on the multiple shadow copies or concurrent API calls to the CMDB, and even more so if each connection is configured with several workers. I would like to stress how important it is to adopt the latest version and service pack of BMC Discovery 11.1 right now, as it, is, as it includes various enhancements and fixes that alleviate many past pain points. For example, Discovery 11.1 is the only version currently that allows you to multi-thread the synchronization by specifying more than one worker thread, or that offers the ability to perform incremental resync when needed where you do not have to wait for the resync to finish anymore before performing continuous sync along with your scan. We have discussed earlier how defining adequate root node and CI type filters can help you reduce the amount of data sync. Besides increasing the relevance of the data for CMDB users, it can also have a positive impact on overall performance. The sync connection configuration parameters may have a drastic impact in sync performance. This is especially true for the number of concurrent workers, and it is therefore recommended to perform some gradual testing to achieve optimal sync performance without negatively impacting the CMDB. Likewise, the use of a dedicated private RPC queue may benefit performance not only for the sync process, but also for other components that may be running on a BMC Remedy AR server. Now, let's hear Manish talk about how to ensure your AR CMDB system is tuned optimally for this integration. So, when it comes to a CMDB, I think so far we have seen about ADDM 
uh, uh, CMDB sync part of it. Now we'll look at it, uh, how can we and what are the factors uh, play a role uh, when it comes to the performance as well as how can we do the performance tuning too. So uh, the, on, a, on a performance tuning side, before we jump on into it, uh, there are a couple of uh, factors to kind of uh, keep in mind. Uh, working with the different customers, what uh, we have experienced is uh, CMDB has been loaded with uh, more than it needs uh, many times. And uh, it's always important to look at it, what your uh, business uh, uh, use cases are. And to make sure your data is aligned with it, not seem to be loaded with a lot more information, which is not going to be utilized for your use case. So it's a very, very important. If your data is not really needed today or uh, in near future, keep it kind of holding in the ADDM side, not to load in a CMDB. And uh, I think uh, uh, Nicholas has already uh, covered as a part of um, uh, his uh, 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 synchronous, synchronization basics where how to filter out or exclude data. ADDM CMDB sync is again another intensive integration uh, activity um, and it's very important to have that activity uh, done on AR integration server as a part of overall deployment architecture. Um, so more information you can find as a uh, part of our official documentation. I will cover some of the links as a, at the end of this uh, webinar. Uh, it is also important to have a latest CR CMDB uh, version, service pack patch, or the hotfixes applied. Uh, as we experience some of the um, uh, performance-related issues, we go and fix it. So better you leverage them uh, on, on, on a regular basis. Before, so uh, this is more about the performance, uh, the factors. Uh, now we look at it the more the tuning part of it. I want to kind of explain what exactly CMDB private queue is. Uh, the private queue is the whole concept uh, uh, you may know about uh, if, with an AR background, is a concept of the AR server. Uh, it allows you to uh, configure a different queue for your components. And the CMDB got a uh, kind of narrow range uh, uh, to so uh, CMDB client can kind of utilize that particular queue. Basically, uh, AR server uh, will allow you to spawn or dedicate certain threads on the server side, uh, so it can serve a specific uh, client request. When it comes to uh, CMDB private queue, there are four, um, uh, four ports as a part of the range from 390696 to 99. Now, first two threads are uh, kind of reserved for uh, admin thread. So if there is no private queue configured from client side and there is no server side configuration for a same private queue port, uh, all the CMDB API requests will go to 390696, which is default admin queue, and will be utilized fast and rescued for uh, further processing. But when it comes to uh, 390698 and 99, right, these two ports are actually uh, available for CMDB client. Now, as you know, that there are the only two ports available and we may have a lot more CMDB clients. So we have to adjust and uh, look at how we schedule the activity and not to overlap with, uh, you know, one another uh, CMDB client operations. Um, by default or the out of box, uh, 390698 is uh, for reconciliation engine, knowing it's a very intensive uh, uh, operation, integration activity. And 390699 is for normalization uh, engine. But that can, this both ports can be utilized for other CMDB clients as far as they are not overlapped with each other. When it comes to CMDB performance tuning, first of all, I'll start with the basics, um, hardware configuration, right? Whether we have enough RAM on as well as CPU uh, as per our performance guidelines um, on an AR server as well as on database server. Do we have enough thread configuration as well as CMDB private queue configured? If not, uh, uh, I would recommend that uh, to configure it one for ADDM CMDB sync operation. Um, when you see the indication, when it comes to the CMDB private queue, the indication is my AR server is busy processing, uh, uh, you know, different uh, operations. 
and you see the timeout activities and you know those errors in AR error log or AR monitor log, you would see those operations. At that time, dedicating a number, uh, you know, uh, SIMDB private queue to ADDM SIMDB sync, uh, you can have your ADDM SIMDB sync operation kind of continue running without any error message. Uh, of course, there is a lot more tuning is also needed if you uh, come across some other errors over there. When it comes to AR server database tuning, uh, again, I think RAM and CPU allocation uh, is very, very important for optimal throughput. Uh, it is also important to have a database configuration um, um, uh, done correctly as per uh, the guidelines uh, that we have uh, from our performance uh, performance team. I'll share uh, the documentation part of it uh, in a bit. So this is what our official documentation, uh, that link that I shared over here. At the same time, I'm just kind of quickly uh, uh, going through what all information has been covered. Hardware requirement is uh, uh, is very, very important there, right? Uh, uh, make sure that ER server has been configured and has enough resource allocated to it. Sizing and deployment, right? How the sizing has been uh, done, uh, not only integration server, but as well as the user phasing server too. Um, when it comes to uh, the deployment, that's where uh, we are talking about uh, which name to as integration server and multiple user facing server to kind of balance the load without any 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 um, any uh, timeout uh, uh, issues not only uh, in the integration server as well as not on the user facing server. Uh, you will also see at the, at the bottom of this page, uh, uh, one it, which is highlighted about how to tune your database servers. So we have a tuning guideline for Oracle and SQL Server both, uh, which are the specific parameters to get the optimal throughput. And with that, uh, we'll kind of now deep dive with the actual uh, uh, you know the real example. How you kind of go through the logs. How you to review what the, what how to make sense of the log and the information to utilize for uh, performance tuning. I'll hand it over to now Nicholas to go through the uh, CMDB sync part of it. Thank you, Manish. So yes, should you be curious about the inner workings of the CMDB sync on the BMC Discovery Appliance? There are two files in the Discovery Log folder that capture this activity. One of them, TWSVC CMDB Sync Transformer Log, shows the activity related to the transformation of the discovery data, which is the source subgraph, into the target common data model subgraph, and the comparison of the target subgraph with the current shadow copy. The differences that have been found and then passed on to the exporter, as we see in this example in the green box, for our newly discovered host, SUSI Pro 9.1, as it was not already present in the shadow copy, meaning it had not been previously synced to the CMDB, the creation of its seven CIs and 13 relationships need, needs to be passed on to the exporter. Then we have the TWCMDB sync exporter.log file that shows the activity related to the actual synchronization of those differences to the CMDB via the CMDB APIs. These may include creation, update, or deletion of CIs and relationships. Once, once those are all complete, the transformer log above shows the completion status as well as the as timing details of how much time was spent transforming, reading the shadow copy, and diffing against the target graph, and exporting the differences. Note that if you had timeout errors such as AR error 91, they would appear in the uh, TWCMDB sync exporter log, and that's when you would want to take action. You can correlate between the activities in the transformer and the exporter logs by looking at the timestamps. Also, I wanted to point, it out, to point out that uh, in the transformer log, the W15 that you see at the beginning of the line here corresponds to a worker. If you had several workers configured for your connection, you might have a W14, W12, W15. Each represents the work of each worker. So if you want to follow a worker log, you would have to basically filter by those numbers. These logs are set to info level logging by default. 
If you are really curious about this activity, you can also set these logs to debug level, which will display a lot more details about what is being synchronized. But this debug level logging is very verbose. So you would usually activate it at the request of DMC support when troubleshooting sync issues. Now Manish will show the AR CMDB logging resulting from the exporter's API calls to the CMDB. So folks, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, CMDB tuning, right, uh, CMDB engine debug log is more, I think you would see that information where you see any specific functional error, but I would directly kind of deep dive on ER, API, and SQL log. Um, how to turn on the logs, I think you may find that information in our documentation. So I'll kind of directly uh, go into the log analysis itself. When it comes to AR, API, SQL log analysis, uh, particularly for performance issues, uh, the one thing uh, I would go and do is um, uh, running a, using a AR log analyzer tool. Uh, it's a very, very powerful, gives a very good summary about what all information is there, which APIs or SQL uh, uh, SQL statements are taking longer time, and it actually puts the information into uh, into uh, by kind of execution time, right? And um, so I'm just kind of showing you here uh, the the report, the summary report that we get from AR Log Analyzer tool. Um, ER Log Analyzer tool documentation has been covered as a, and at the end of this uh, webinar uh, for your reference. Now. In this particular slide, if you see um, on the on the left side, uh, there is the execution time, right? And then is the line number API. API has been the kind of is an acronym for each and every API call been issued by uh, ADDM CMDB Sync or any other CMDB client running during that time in parallel, right? And the start time is the uh, the um, on the on the rightmost uh, side of um, this uh, screen. Execution time is actually giving you the info how longer that API call took, right? Now, um, this is actually a good indicator when you are talking about uh, the, uh, the performance analysis, right? You look at it, why those APIs? When you look at it, when you find many API calls, the same APIs, but multiple instances of it, if you find that, okay, there is definitely something to look at it, right? Take that API, one line number, go to that, try to understand uh, how how long that API took and why that API took longer, whether it's, it spent more time on API itself or it spent more time on SQL statement uh, underlying uh, as a part of that API itself. Next one is in the same report at the bottom, right, uh, little, if you go a little down in that particular report, uh, you find that API calls actually aggregates group by the form or uh, in, first of all, it gives uh, information um, uh, in general for all the APIs and then by form you will, uh, you find the information, how many API calls have been made on particular form. Right. When it comes to AR form, right, uh, it's again, it's a physical, uh, the storage for CMDB classes as well, right? CMDB classes is more like a, you know, I would say semantics or more uh, the conceptualized, but underneath uh, data gets stored into uh, AR form. So it is important to look at it, right, how, how, how many API calls have been made on particular AR or CMDB class form and how longer that time has been spent, right? Uh, which particular API is not performing right, and uh, which API to kind of uh, to kind of really focus on? So these are the kind of summary it gives uh, uh, as a part of this report. Now here I, I highlighted uh, the uh, average time column. It is very important. Sometimes you may find that particular API call has been listed uh, one or two times as a part of my okay top. Uh, one or two instances of particular API calls might have taken longer time. However, their average time for that API has been uh, has been low. So, you know, you may consider there might be a one or two instances, but in general, that API has no problem, right? So, you consider kind of look at it that as a kind of analysis to go and find out a particular API which actually took a longer time and contributed into a poor performance. In the same report, further down, um, there is the API statistics by trade ID, right? 
So here the thread ID, if you look at it, the fast thread, list thread, and at the bottom you will see this is a private queue. If we have a CMDB uh, sync has been configured with any CMDB private queue, you will find a private queue number as well, which might be a 390698 or 99, and see how many number of API calls have been executed as well as how longer, I mean the average idle time, how busy my queue is. So that's very important to kind of uh, to look at it. If my queue is very, very busy, right, uh, you will see the uh, average idle time will be low, maybe uh, lower than a second even. Sometimes I have seen it's a kind of really, uh, say in a milliseconds, I have seen it's uh, uh, the average idle time. That actually indicates, okay, there is an opportunity to add a little bit more thread. But uh, at the same time, we need to make sure that we don't add too many threads on AR server. We balance it, right? If it is an integration server, to see if there is where we can be reduce some threads and add a more thread here, not kind of keep adding threads, which will be a kind of uh, creating a more uh, load on the server itself. And uh, at the bottom of this report, you will find a list of um, uh, SQL statements, uh, which took a kind of a co comparatively the longer time there. And this SQL statements uh, will indicate, uh, okay, if my API call has taken longer time, it's very, very well possible that the SQL statement might have taken longer time too. And that's actually a kind of uh, area to, to tune your system. So. Take a look at about that particular SQL statement. If there is any any index to be applied, if uh, if not, uh, are you seeing in general that all the SQL statements are taking longer time? Like an insert, a typically insert shouldn't take that long time. Um, select is where you can have uh, um, index uh, uh, utilized. In case of insert and all others, uh, look at it. Make sure that system has been configured as per our performance guidelines and uh, that uh, the one document that I shared earlier in the in the slide deck. Um, once you go through that, uh, uh, um, if there is any configuration changes to be made, uh, we'll go and do it and then uh, run the test to see if uh, you see the, the performance difference. And I think that that's, a, uh, that's a pretty much uh, uh, it uh, when it comes to the AR server as well as database tuning. I'm, I'm covering a couple of references here, uh, which will uh, definitely be a very, very helpful for your, uh, you know, uh, for a better performance or better throughput of your ADDM CMDB sync as well as the CMDB in general. Uh, these guidelines are not only uh, kind of um, limited to CMDB sync operation, but you can use it for your uh, reconciliation, normalization components as well, and uh, other uh, CMDB integration activities. Uh, we do have a log, um, a log analyzer uh, uh, documentation as well as CMDB synchronization documentation too. With that, I'll... Uh, um, hand it over to Nicholas for that. Yes, actually, this concludes our overview of the BMC discovery to Atrium CMDB synchronization process and details around performance tuning for this integration. We hope it was useful and will help you achieve optimal performance in your environment. Great. Thank you, Nicholas, and thank you, Manish. At this time, we'll go ahead and uh, move over to questions. Steve, do we have some questions you uh, have queued up? Yep, uh, we certainly do. Uh, the first question we have is, what is a typical sync throughput? Hmm, that's a good question. There's no, there's no real guidelines for this, but um, you know, you can. What you want to do is make sure that you at least can sync at the same throughput as what you scan. So let's say if you are scanning at the throughput of you know, let's say 3,000 hosts per hour, you want to make sure that you can sync at that speed. And usually we'll be able to. Uh, there are different contexts for syncing. There is, you know, you can be syncing for a host for the first time and have to send the whole information, or you might be just refreshing a host after scanning it again and just sending the, the deltas. Uh, so there's no clear answer on that, but, you know, I think I can confidently say that I've seen sync throughput in a regular situation of, you know, several thousand per hour, several thousand hosts per hour with all their CIs and everything. All right, thank you. Uh, next question is, regarding incremental resync, how does it work exactly? 
Um, yeah, the, the rethink is a different story. It's, uh, first, it's something that hopefully you don't have to do too often. You do it once if you are thinking into a, uh, a data set that was not empty to start with, or you know, if you upgrade from a specific version of discovery, you might have to do, do it also if somebody went to mess with the data in, uh, in the uh, data set directly outside of the sync process. Um, the way incremental rethink works is that in the past, you had to perform the full rethink commit phase prior to being allowed to synchronize again. If you choose to do incremental rethink, basically we remember the work that we, would, we have to do in a rethink, but we don't do it right away. We do it incrementally. As each root node is synced, it applies changes, changes to it, to that root node only. Eventually, when you have rescanned re and rethink all your root nodes, the, basically the incremental rethink will be complete. Uh, there's a little thing here about uh, that is a little different deletions. The deletions for the incremental rethink are performed asynchronous, in, asynchronously. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for incremental rethink. It's a great addition in uh, ADDM 11.1, .1, in Discovery 11.1, sorry. Thank you. Uh, next question is, can batch size be increased to improve performance? Uh, yes, although we would not necessarily recommend this. Uh, in order to improve performance, it's better to play with the number of workers. The batch size basically means the amount of data that will be sent in a, you know, in a batched operation uh, to the CMDB. So the, the bigger the batch size, the most operation will take place in one single transaction. Uh, this could have some consequences on the CMDB and the database side of things. Uh, and also, it would have some consequences in case of failure. More uh, more data would uh, would be rolled back. Maybe manage us. So yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with what uh, Nicholas mentioned. But when you have a bigger batch size, it's kind of uh, putting more data in the single transaction, right? So if you are considering your data, for example, in case of any any worst case uh, failure. Um, you may have to kind of reprocess that data, uh, you know, in, in case of failure, right? You kind of, uh, I would say that uh, keep a batch size uh, uh, smaller, not, I mean, not at least increase for sure, but if you kind of keep a smaller batch size and keep a little bit more higher, th number of threads or more, right, that would help you to uh, the uh, throughput. Now, number of threads, when we are talking about it here, right, make sure that it's aligned with my either CMDB private queue or if it's on the integration server where there is no any other activities happening with aligned with your fast and list thread uh, configuration. So make sure, you know, server has been aligned with what CMDB sync operation has been configured when it comes to a thread configuration. Great, thank you. Uh, the next two questions are around concurrent workers. Uh, the first one is, is the number of concurrent workers limited by AR server specs slash configuration? So number of concurrent threads, I think I just uh, kind of we uh, very high level touch upon that particular point. Uh, number of concurrent worker threads, uh, I would say yes. Um, it's again trade of how you really kind of configure it. If you keep a private queue uh, thread configuration, right, a number of threads are there, make sure that the enough threads are, um, uh, you know, on the CMDB client is also the same number of threads. Um, when it's a mismatch, when your ADDM CMDB thing has more thread but not have enough thread on the private queue or a fast list thread, right, you will see uh, that my the processing is slow, and sometimes you may experience the timeout issue. So yes, I mean, both should be in a sync when it comes to a thread configuration. All right, thank you. Uh, next question regarding concurrent workers. Is concurrent workers in 11.1.x the same as resync threads in 10.2? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, resync thread is. Uh, is basically specific to resync. Uh, now in 11.1, .1, basically resync leverages the number of uh, CPUs you have on the discovery appliances, so that uh, you can have different workers performing the part of the resync operation concurrently. 
so it's, uh, however, the number of sync workers are really applied to the synchronization process where not only not only for transformation but also for synchronization, you have different workers working concurrently. So it's not the same as the, the resync threads uh, in 10.2. Great. Thank you. Our next question is, does using private queue mean sharing reconciliation slash normalization queue? Or can we have additional queues exclusive to CMDB sync? So at present, uh, we, have, uh, we have only two private queues, right, for CMDB client. So when it comes to either sharing or you want to kind of dedicate uh, one particular queue so I have seen a different deployments, okay, uh, with our uh, the customer base. One is uh, use a private queue, CMDB sync a private queue as well as normalization on one particular port, which is 390699, and dedicate uh, reconciliation uh, to 390698 because reconciliation engine activity will be all the time. You will see very, very heavy operations going on. That's one deployment. Second thing is, um, you can have, a, if you're not having enough normalization engine activity or not having enough operation, you can offload a normalization to fast and list queue. Dedicate uh, 39069 to 99 to your uh, CMDB sync operation, and another one is for reconciliation engine. Third variance of is you have very high operation, very heavy operation on integration servers, right? And you may need another integration server for other activities. So you may have CMDB sync operation running on a separate integration, dedicated integration server, where you have a full, uh, you know, access. Either you want to use 390698 or 99, where other integration servers for reconciliation and normalization configured on private queue. So there are different ways to kind of configure it. So, you know, it depends on which particular scenario you kind of fit in or the experiencing, you can use it. Great, thank you. Um, okay, we are doing the resync right now, but we're but we aren't able to see more than these sync recreation of seventy one thousand thirty five CIs. But not many CIs have been recreated yet. Is it normal? I'm not too sure how to answer that. Uh, recreation basically. That's what it says. It, it, it tries to recreate a CI that we know used to exist, uh, but basically it, it is possible that it finds the CI there and then just updates it, otherwise it recreates it. I'm not sure I fully understand the question. Maybe somebody else on the panelist? Check with them. Maybe Duncan or Briz would have an answer to that? Duncan, if you have an answer, uh, can you signal uh, Alan, our operator, to unmute you? Hi, can people hear me or can Alan hear me? Yep. Yes. Thank you. So, are people hearing me? I, I, I guess they are. Yes, yes, um, we can hear you. Yes. So, so, so I think I, the, the question was, was put in the, the Q&A on the, the text q and I, I think the question is that the that that number of, of recreations is being displayed and then there's no further um, progress information. And the question is, is that normal? And the answer is no, it's not. And therefore we would want to look into what, what's going on. Is it is it that it's actually doing it but it's failing to report it or is it more likely that actually it's not, not happening? Um, so I think that's something that customer support would really help with. But the, the simple answer to the question is no, it's not normal that you get no progress indication at all that you'd expect, even if it's going, even if the CDB is going very slowly, you'd expect to see some progress indication both in the user interface and in the logs. Thank you, Duncan. So for the person that asked, asked that question, probably we want to open up a support ticket. If it's one, one is not already open, to look into that problem. Great, thank you. Let's move on to the next question. Um, what does it mean when the average time of the API is high but the SQL statements are low averages. So average time of API is high. When it comes to average time, 
spent by particular API. Uh, it means, uh, you know, where sequences, you know, underline the SQL statement is low. What it means is uh, server has been kind of spent more time executing that API on the server side itself, where database is performing very good. You don't see the SQL is kind of really a bottleneck as a part of your tuning exercise. You may have to look at it why my server has been spending more time on API. Is there any tuning is needed on my AR server? Maybe a server is very busy processing different requests, right? Or uh, any further tuning is needed. So that's the kind of area where I would kind of really focus on. Look at how can I tune my AR server there. Great, thank you. Uh, next question is, in the API SQL logs, how do you recognize a particular API SQL statement that is part of CMDB sync? And, and the customer, is uh, he understands the part about private queues. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so when you look at the AR API SQL log, right, you will see there is a client RPC. Uh, there is a one, I, uh, I don't have information, but once you kind of look at it in, inside, there are three different uh, uh, the, uh, the information as a particular log message you would find it. One is thread ID, right, RPC ID. That actually combination makes uh, that which particular API call that you should refer. At the same time, when the API has been executed by CMDB queue, right, if it's a private queue, you will see that number showing up there. Either is a 3906989. And at the same time, you will see a user name as well, right? Uh, so you know what user you have used as a part of ADDM CMDB sync operation, right? And that user is something you can you can look at, at those messages to understand uh, the complete API execution. Great, thank you. Um, next question is: Can we query the ADDM data for third-party application to use a um, to use to minimize querying CMDB? Well, yes, the, uh, the discovery product comes with a uh, query language to access the data within its data store. So you can definitely query the data. It is not a relational database, though. It's a graph-based database with its own language. Thank you. Um, is it more efficient to filter on the ADDM or CMDB side of the CMDB sync filtering configuration? If within ADDM, will there eventually be more filters, i.e. software instance nodes? Well, uh, it is more efficient to start. It's a two-phase process, the, the filtering. So yes, you want to start by filtering uh, at the BMC discovery data level. You want to start by filtering what you want to transform into the common data model. Uh, this way, after that, when you when you filter at the CDM level where you say, well, I don't want this class or this class, I don't want to, uh, I don't want BMC underscore products to make it through, then it doesn't, ha it has less things to filter through because the, uh, uh, basically the data coming from BMC discovery is less. Uh, as far as uh, future additional filters, I'm not sure about that. Maybe somebody wants to speak about this, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't know of any future plans for additional filters. I think we are already pretty, uh, we have a pretty extensive list of filters and CIs that can be filtered. All right, uh, next question is, when ProdDB is restoring to QA, ADD immigration, integration ID in QA, ADDM dataset and consolidator might be different, which will lead to duplicate CI creation. What steps do we need to do before or after the DB refresh? I heard we can export and import ADDM integration. Yes, that's right. There is a, um, there is a tool that we have called the root, root not key export and import. Uh, that talks about this kind of context where you want to make sure that um, basically when you discover a, uh, a system, it will be reusing the key that it was using in the past. A, this is a difficult topic uh, 
But basically, I, I believe the answer you are looking for here would be to look into the uh, discovery documentation for root, not key, export, and import process. This is something that will help you avoiding duplicate and making sure that whatever data comes into your CMDB applies to the same nodes that were uh, synchronized previously. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question is, with 11.1, .1, does clustering improve CMDB sync performance? So is one possible way to improve performance is to include, is to add additional appliances to the consolidation cluster? Is one big appliance better to do CMDB sync or two smaller appliances in a cluster? Steve, can you re-ask that question, please? Absolutely. Um, with 11.1, .1, does clustering improve CMDB sync performance? So is one possible way to improve performance is to add additional appliances to the consolidation cluster? Is one big appliance better to do CMDB sync or two smaller appliances in a cluster? Okay, uh, so no, clustering will not improve the CMDB sync itself. It will improve the overall performance of the uh, discovery cluster or appliance. So in the end, if you have an appliance that's, you know, basically just good enough to do what it has to do, uh, if you do everything at once, like scanning and uh, continuous sync, uh, and the uh, appliance that it does its own, you know, self-maintenance and everything, and if you feel things are a little slow, yes, you can cluster the, uh, the appliance or your consolidation, add a, a cluster member to your consolidation cluster, things will be faster overall. But the actual sync, uh, the actual synchronization only happens from the the cluster coordinator to the CMDB. So that that operation itself, that communication, is from a single appliance in your cluster to the CMDB. However, everything that's related, such as all the data model operations uh, that occur when you do CMDB sync, those will benefit from adding, usually from adding a member to your cluster. So uh, indirectly, yes, it will better the performance, but it's not really a reason to add a member. All right, great, thanks. We're uh, getting towards the end of the questions. I have about four more. Um, is there worker threads configuration best practices documented for Discovery 11.x? For example, x CPUs equals suggested x threads. I do not believe we have guidelines for that. No, but. so I think the guideline is only for our server side. When you're looking at the, I think, worker thread, ADDM, CMDB sync side of uh, the thread configuration, it's uh, kind of very, very much important how ADDM is actually sending all the requests, right, all the APIs it's executing on a server side. If the server is not ready to take that load, right, uh, you can't go and increase the number of threads on the client side itself. So. I would say it's more important how your ER service configured, and that's where, uh, you know, uh, number of CPU and all. We gave a very high level uh, kind of any calculation about it. I, I don't remember exactly, but you can find it as a part of our documentation, how to how to make a thread configuration there, fast place or private queue there. Great, thank you. Um, if I set inline normalization on the data set, which Discovery syncs to, I suppose it is not a good idea to sync on the normalization private queue, 98. Well, so first of all, let me say, when it comes to inline normalization, right, uh, this particular has been, uh, the flag has been used for a two separate uh, normalization mode. One is you process your data as it comes in, right, as a part of the same transaction, which is inline mode, and the, and the continuous mode, which actually runs behind the scene, which will allow you to kind of put a data in, right? So these are the two different modes are there. Uh, it depends on how you have deployed and where normalization would run on the same integration server where CMDB is synced. Uh, it would utilize your queue uh, in, in a barrel mode. Um, but at the same time, when you look at it, the load it gives uh, uh, to the queue, uh, that that's uh, the part is very important. If you are doing incremental load, um, 
on a normalization uh, normalization processing part, you may not expect that too much data coming in. At the same time, when the ADDM CMDB sync is running, it is okay to share the queue. So again, I think it goes to case by case basis, I would say. Um, and we have to kind of take a best judgment how my load is coming on normalization as well as CMDB sync side. At the same time, whether there is any clash or the conflict on the, the scheduling part of it. If my, so that, that's all I would say. I mean, I can provide more details, but that's a kind of, uh, I would say, uh, uh, thumb rule there. That, and then go by, uh, you know, your case-by-case -case basis. How much data coming in on both a tr uh, stream and whether you really need to share uh, your private queue or you want to offload one of the components on a fast and list queue. Great, thank you. Um, do you recommend inline normalization or a normalization job? We see many errors when using inline. So when it comes to inline normalization, that again, uh, how your uh, data set has been con configured for normalization, uh, we recommend continuous normalization versus inline. Inline works in the same transaction. We, we, uh, so we don't recommend that part. Uh, in case of your heavier, the initial load, we recommend batch mode, which is kind of very much uh, tuned for uh, uh, kind of dealing with uh, the bigger load. For example, 500,000 million data you have to process on a first time, right? That's where we recommend batch mode. In case of incremental load, we recommend continuous mode, which actually takes a few CRs at a time and then process behind the scene. But it doesn't block your actual, uh, the transaction, which is putting a data in your same TV. All right, perfect. Um, let me know if you need to repeat, if I need to repeat this next question. Um, if you want the ADD um, data set to reconcile with the asset data set, is it best practice to create the asset first and then run ADDM, or let ADDM create the asset and edit it after? So if I understood uh, uh, correctly, so the question is about uh, the best practice, uh, how you want to kind of reconcile data into BMC asset. So BMC asset is a production data set. You may have any other data set, but the BMC asset by out of boxes is our, uh, as a production data set. All other discovery, uh, discovery or any other external data store, uh, they first of all put their data into CMDB in a working data set, then normalize, reconcile into production data set. So BMC asset is only a single source where all the sources are getting, sorry, single data set where all the sources are merging in. So best practice is any data that you are we want to kind of merge into BMC asset, first of all, get them into the CMDB in a working data set. So create a BMC ADDM first, do ADDM CMDB sync into uh, this data set. Once you have a data in, right, then do normalization, reconciliation to merge into BMC asset. I don't know whether I, I kind of, uh, I answered the question, but that's what I meant. But if you have a kind of more clarification, uh, we would like to have that, uh, question in, in detail, and then we'll answer as a part of uh, published Q&A. Perfect. Uh, the next question is just um, looking for your comments. Um, I read somewhere to avoid rethink, which would mean not root node key export slash import. It's better to just start with the fresh ADDM CMDB synchronization into an empty CMDB data set. Yes, that's true. Uh, an empty CMDB, uh, CMDB data set basically means we will not have to do rethink because there is no information in there, and we know that. So that means that whatever data you transform from a BMC discovery will get into a, a fresh data set that way. So yes, it is a, definitely a way to avoid rethink. Thank you. All right, next question is, um, and this is actually my last question that I have. Um, is it possible um, to change the synchronization key for some configuration items so that we can have one CI that corresponds to that item? Does it impact in some mode the sync with some problem?
Can you repeat that question, please, Steve? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, is it possible to change the synchronization key for some configuration item so that we can have one CI that corresponds to that item? Does it impact in some mode the sync with some problem? That's how it's written. I, as far as I know, we don't recommend to change a key. No, uh, we have the ADM, the synchronization key I think that you refer to is the ADGM integration ID. Uh, what ends up as the ADGM integration ID field in, uh, in CMDB and that corresponds to the key in the BMC discovery data store. We do not support changing those. Um, however, you might, you might be able to make use of all other fields like uh, token ID, things like that. But I'm not sure I fully understand the question, so that might be another one that needs to be elaborated. And so I think, Steve, what we're going to do is, as a, for this particular question, we'll kind of review internally and we'll publish as a part of our, you know, Q&A, um, publish Q&A. All right, very good. All right, this will be a last call for any Q&A that you may have. Uh, please use the Q&A section in the WebEx event. And I'll just uh, pause for a few moments to see if a question comes in. I do have one question here. Um, it says similar to a question asked before, but to reiterate, what is the best practice for CMDB DB copybacks to connect to another discovery environment, say prod or QA, and prevent sync errors? Well, basically, what, if what we are talking about is taking a copy of a uh, discovery data set from one CMDB and putting it somewhere else on another CMDB and have another discovery environment connect to it, then what you would want to make sure is that that other discovery environment, basically when it discovers the data that it's syncing into the, the CMDB, uses the same keys as the original environment that originally populated the original uh, CMDB. If that's the case, to do that, again, you have to use this concept of root node key export. You would export the root node from your, uh, your original discovery environment, and you would import those root node keys into your QA environment or dev environment, uh, so that when your QA environment rediscovers those hosts, it will reuse the same exact keys or ADM integration IDs, and basically, when it sinks into that copy of your uh, of your data set, it will find the matching keys and uh, update uh, update those CIs. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, uh, since there are no further questions at this time, we'll go ahead and wrap up today's Q and A um, uh, section of the webinar. Back over to you, Greg. Great, thank you, Steve. And again, uh, thank you to Nicholas and Manish for the uh, time today, as well as all of our panelists uh, that helped out with the Q&A. Uh, wanted to uh, go over contacting BMC via the social sources, as well as the standard uh, website, our 800 number, and email address. And everything can be searched on our knowledge base. At this point, wanted to uh, thank everybody for joining. And that will conclude this month's webinar. Thank you.